The eye tracking in this headset is insane. Look at anything. Pinch like this. Oh yeah. It was reading my mind. There's something really special about this technology. I'm hearing it everywhere. The new Apple Vision Pro is simply magical. That's the word they're using magical for a tech device, let alone for a VR headset. And it's not because of the displays or apps or the comfort. It's surprisingly mainly because of its user interface. But here's the thing. I've been in VR for half a decade and I've been making videos about AR and VR for most of that time. And I struggle to believe that Apple has somehow created something so radically superior, so transformative that it warrants the use of the word magical. And so given all this, I have this burning desire to see it for myself so I can make my own conclusions. The problem with that though is I can't get access to an Apple Vision Pro. It's impossible. Only a select few were granted access and the rest of us might have to wait an entire year before it's released to the public. And to me, that's an unacceptable answer, especially when I just want to try out the UI. But I figured I have the next best thing right here, the MetaQuest Pro. It boasts all the same features like eye tracking, hand tracking, pass through, all the same stuff as a Vision Pro. So of course, I reached out to the vice president of Meta, proposing an idea to explore Apple-esque user interfaces on their hardware as a public test. We have this amazing piece of tech today, why not push its boundaries and actually use it? And of course, to my surprise, no response. So, you know what? Here's the deal. If Meta won't pioneer this exploration of their own hardware, I'll do it myself. I just need to see for myself if this is the innovation everyone makes it out to be. So, we're going to recreate the magic that is the Apple Vision Pro UI in VR on the MetaQuest Pro. And then, I'm gonna release it to everyone so you can try it out for yourself. And I think you'll see by the time we're done with this experiment that everything we know about VR, or more properly, everything we think we know about VR just might have been So before we get to building and testing, let's talk about user interfaces. You may not really think all that much about the UI and UX of all the technology you use around you. And that's by design. A good user experience is one that you don't have to think about. You're able to interface with the technology easily. It's intuitive. Usually you only really think about a UI if it's bad. And whether it's a computer or smartphone, we have had decades to perfect these things. But of course, that means that it wasn't always perfect. I mean, early computers didn't even have a mouse. One of the first ideas was actually to use your foot and knees to control a computer, which makes me really glad that the mouse caught on. And then, of course, nowadays our phones barely have any buttons. I always think back to the ex-Microsoft CEO's statement when the transition from Blackberry-style phones to touchscreens happened. It doesn't have a keyboard, which makes it not a very good email machine. Yeah, that didn't age so well. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that UI UX is an ever-changing and evolving thing. We've had decades to figure out most of the things around us, but what about the next step in computing, spatial computing, AR? and VR. There has been decades of research, but it really wasn't until about six years or so ago that we made a huge leap and this technology was actually made available to people. And to be real, with all of the experience I have with different headsets, the only thing that I'm confident about regarding UI and UX of VR and AR is that I am not confident that we have figured it out yet. And to see where I'm coming from, let's just look at these VR user interfaces. Basically, all VR UIs have worked the same for the past decade. You have a couple ways to control things, basically. The first one that is used for 99% of all applications, doesn't matter what operating system you're on, what game you're in, what headset you're using, ubiquitously, VR is controlled by a laser that points out of your controller. You point the laser over certain UI elements and press the trigger, and that's how you interact. And it works. It's sometimes clumsy and a little shaky and scrolling can be weird, but for any and all menu navigation, it does its job. Now, hand tracking is the other control method that's used far less often. It's largely hardware locked because only a few devices have it, and really only meta headsets allow you to interact with the entire operating system using just hands. And their systems do work as well, and I like using it, but there's a problem. When I'm touching a screen in VR or interacting with UI, I'm not actually touching anything. And the best way I could equate this is it's like trying to use your phone without touching the screen and using it a few feet away. It just feels off and a little clunky and it's not all that accurate. So what does Apple's headset do? 
that's different. Well, the Vision Pro actually doesn't have any controllers at all, which is a huge point of controversy. The main control method that VR has used for 10 years is just out the window, and they aren't using purely hand tracking in the way that Meta does. Instead, they use a pretty basic system, combining eye tracking with hand tracking. So instead of pointing a laser at an icon and then pressing the button to interact with it, you look at the icon and perform a subtle pinch gesture. That's it. And seemingly, this works for everything throughout the operating system. If you look at a search bar, you just pinch and speak. Virtual keyboards are hell if you've ever tried one, so this is great. If you want to move a window or object, you just pinch and look at where you want to move it to. And most of the Vision Pro's praise comes down to just this. This is the magic. It's all down to UI, which makes this whole experiment really straightforward. We are, of course, going to recreate this exact setup. Make the magic. Now, I'm not necessarily a VR developer. I've dabbled plenty, but this is the first time I'm building anything for the Quest. But I do know what we need, and I know what I want to accomplish. So here's the basic concept. I want to be able to look at something, pinch once to be able to move it with my eyes, and then pinch again to deselect it. I also want to build a replica of the home screen app icons that we see in the Vision Pro's main operating system to just see how it feels moving across the icons with your eyes and being able to select it using that pinch. And this is also to see if there's anything special going on. I had one developer say that this idea is going to be impossible because the Quest Pro's eye tracking just isn't accurate enough. So we're going to see for ourselves, because if Apple's headset does have some crazy superior eye tracking to other headsets, I also want to know that. We're going to do this all in Unity using Meta's various SDKs. And with all of these resources and OpenXR, getting a working VR rig in Unity is surprisingly easy. From there, I just add the hand tracking SDK components, quite literally just turn on eye tracking, it's a toggle, and I already have all the basic functioning systems here. Eye tracking and hand tracking are working in my demo. So I know I'm going to need a couple main systems. I'll start with eye tracking. The eye tracking is on, but it's not doing anything. So I'll make a script and assign it to one of the eyes that does something extremely important. It will project an invisible laser in the direction of eye tracking. It's doing what's called a ray cast. Essentially, just copying the laser that's normally on controllers and putting it on my eyes. Now, this is an invisible laser. You obviously don't want to see it coming out of your eyes when you're playing the demo, but here's what it looks like. It knows where I'm looking and it knows if I'm looking at something that is interactable. Step one is finished. Now on to hand tracking. Well, I got hands, but they don't do much yet. I need my simulation to accept a gesture. I need it to know when I pinch and I need it to do something whenever I do that pinch. So I built a simple test that detects if my index finger comes close to my thumb. I then turn that into my pinch gesture that can be referenced for anything. And after we have a pinch, we're already on to step three. Putting it all together so that if I look at something that is interactable and then I pinch, I then interact with it. Now, this was the hard part, and it took me two 14-hour days straight of scripting, testing, and lots of bouncing off of ChatGPT4 to check errors in my code. I am not a classically trained programmer, but 48 hours later, lots of coffee, and with the help of my AI friend, I had a completely working prototype. The eye tracking raycast allows me to look at objects, change the material, and start an animation when I look at it, and then when I pinch while looking at something, I'm able to move it. And surprisingly, it already feels really good. Despite a few bugs, I can look at something, have my hands at my waist and pinch, and it just works. But now that my demo works, it's time to make it pretty. This is the Meta Magic Pro demo. Everything works as intended. It's still not perfect. There's a few weird bugs that happen occasionally, but it gets the point across. It is a user interface test that allows us to demo the most praised part of the Vision Pro, all using current off-the-shelf hardware and without having to wait a year to spend $3,500 on one. And after all this work, after trying it myself, I really, really think that we're onto something. I think it's time to have a serious talk about my impressions. I don't think the laser on the controller that we've been using for years is the only answer. And for right now, hand tracking alone is a little clumsy, but I had a stark realization after putting this together. And here's where my mind was at. After I finished making the demo, I hopped onto the index, of course, using index controllers, and I had this thought as I navigated through the Steam VR menu. Why do I have to hold controllers all the time, 24 7 
while in VR. And to do basic interactions, why do I have to aim a pointer at things? How great would it be if I only grabbed a controller when I needed it for a game, for example? Everything else, watching movies, simple apps, basic menu navigation, you know, the casual stuff, they don't need a controller if you have the right other hardware. And I've never had this thought before, but suddenly I found it really odd that controllers are a requirement at all times. Plus, they restrict you from interfacing with the physical world. Whereas my demo and the magic that people call the Vision Pro's UI feels just pretty amazing to use. We don't have to think about where our eyes are looking. We don't aim them. You just look. And this little pinch that can be performed at my hip even is so subtle that the best way I can explain how it feels to interact using this method is like using a simple brain computer interface, which I've used a couple of them for VR and they provide the same feel as this, like the application is reacting more to your thoughts than your movements. Which circles back to UI UX design. A good design goes unnoticed, effortlessly facilitating the interaction between the user and the technology. But a great design can change everything. And the magic that everybody is talking about isn't so much a revolutionary feature that only Apple has, it's more about combining simple, intuitive, and efficient interactions to make a magical experience. One that feels good to use and is confidence inspiring in a virtual environment. And don't get me wrong here, I am not dismissing controllers for VR or saying they're obsolete, actually quite the opposite. Controllers are absolutely necessary for most VR experiences, especially games. But they are tools, and just like how I wouldn't use a hammer to cut down a tree, maybe it's worth exploring how we can more efficiently think about the tools that we use within VR. Because you gotta admit, if you think about it for a minute, it is just a little weird that we have to strap controllers to our hands for every VR interaction. Imagine if we only had to pick them up when we needed them. And I also want to say that this is not a perfect demonstration, it's just a proof of concept to see if the Quest Pro is even capable of it. I wasn't sure because Meta didn't use eye tracking for anything, and it turns out that it is. But I gotta admit, it is a whole different beast to implement this into an entire operating system, and I'm not saying that this is the exact same thing as Apple's headset. In fact, their system is a whole lot more complicated. I learned that after hearing from a Unity engineer. I just did everything the easy way here, but the point of this is that it's just an exploration of a totally new VR UI. Which brings us back to the original question that I asked at the beginning of this video. Were we wrong about VR? Is Apple right? And I don't think there's any good answer for that. Because there is no defined wrong or right answer in how to solve these UI UX problems. The only real wrong answer is to think that what we have now can't get better than it currently is. To think that there's no room for innovation. Because there is so much we can do in so many different ways to make AR and VR so much better. And I still truly don't think that we have found our mouse yet. But I will say that I am kind of concerned after making this video, because Meta for some reason isn't including eye tracking on their next headset, the Quest 3, and I think that's one of the biggest mistakes they'll make in the next year or two. If the Quest 3 did have eye tracking, it would be a pretty valid competitor in almost every way besides processing power to the Vision Pro, really. And if there's one major takeaway from this, it's that I really hope that eye tracking makes its way to VR headsets as the standard as as soon as possible, because it's such an extremely powerful tool. Not only for foveated rendering, which gives you 10 to 15% free performance, it looks way better in social applications, it's fun for games that use it as an interaction tool, and if I could navigate through all of Steam VR and the Oculus OS using it right now in this fashion, I would. I wouldn't even think twice about it. And I'd probably end up using VR even more for just casual things. But it has to become standard, and companies like Meta have to actually use the hardware that they put in their headsets, unlike how they did with the Quest Pro. And so, my final conclusion sum up. And while I haven't tried the full Apple headset yet, they are onto something really awesome in terms of UI especially. And I really hope that everybody takes this idea and steals it and runs with it, because it's the 
the closest thing to VR's mouse that I have ever experienced, and I want more of it, which is exactly why I made this little tech demo. And I want everybody to be able to try this for themselves, so this demo will be available on SideQuest for everyone to try. Just know that I made this in like two days, so there are plenty of bugs, but I do plan on updating it with more and more functionality to make this demo more comprehensive than just basic interaction. And it will work on a Quest 2 as well, just you'll be using head movement rather than eye movement. I'll be updating the status of the tech demo, both in my Discord and on Twitter. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed all this. I got a lot more coming. Turns out deving in VR is really fun and I want to do a lot more of it. But I also want to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. And of course, don't forget to like this video if you loved it. Subscribe if you want more of this and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love. Relax.